a quick view of my flow right there. I've got the top cap off. Got a little bit of antifreeze in that. And from the looks of it, I probably should have cleaned that stuff out a little better. Got a lot of grime right there for putting it together. This system currently holds four, 4.6 liters, a little over a gallon. And basically what we have is the 50 inch coil we were looking at is inside here. And that's been connected. You can see this thermal couple. That is the discharge thermal couple. And there is the intake thermal couple. And I have the in and out temperatures there. Um, I have this blower hooked up to this fan and I'm extremely disappointed with the flow rate of the fan. But I did learn an important lesson about radiators. Never hook a radiator up on a dischargeable blower. Always hook it up to the intake. For whatever reason, I would get probably 10 times the performance the other way around. I think a lot of it has to do with the induced vacuum. All of the losses come from the atmosphere, so it doesn't matter. Whereas the fan would then streamline and produce a non-turbulent flow. So this thing just doesn't put out hardly any air at all. I mean, I could feel it and it is blowing some air, but it's nothing to write home about. I'll give you an indication. As you can see, it's not <laughs> terribly violent blast of air. So, this is just the test setup. This here is a 25 foot CSS T coil. It is wrapped around inside of there. As you can see, um, probably was a bad idea to wrap some of that in, what do they call that, refractory mortar? I think that's what it is. So, basically we're just gonna see what type of temperatures I get. Now I could have put it inside of this section here, but that's kind of where the heat for the garage is coming from. The idea here was to do a feasibility test on using this system to heat the house with some type of hydronic system. So we're going to see what type of performance a 50 inch coil puts off inside of this area here, which typically runs at about 300 degrees if I remember correctly. This section here will run at about 700 to 800 degrees. And in the future, if this coil works out okay, I may end up putting another coil inside this section. So, this here is a mixer tank that will eventually be connected to a different radiator because of the flow rate differences of the heating system versus the radiator system. I would simply have another connector connected here and up here, and this thing would be filled up all the way so that the radiator could pull hot water directly from one port. Say this was a hot discharge. I would have my hot intake from my radiator connected right here. So any flow discrepancies would be eliminated with this tube. So that even though I had a low flow rate in my heat system with this small coil, I can tie into this in a proper way to give us a more desired effect. I have a diagram here that shows what I'm saying if I could find it. There's one of them. Okay, so this is what I mean by the mixer tank. <clears throat> okay, this is the, the main radiator. And it's going to have a different flow rate 
than the heating coil or the heating element because the heating element is made of a coiled pipe and it's, it's just a real poorly efficient uh, flow right there. So what we're doing here is we're taking a pump that connects to a pipe. I'm not using the vortex on the, the model I have built there. It's just too hard to build this in, in real life. So I just went ahead and connected straight into it. But anyway, the idea is the discharge from my radiator will hit the pipe, which will be very near to the intake of the reheat. So the cold discharge from the radiator in the house is pumped into the bottom of the pipe where most of it is sucked up by the heating element intake or yes, the heating element intake. Whatever is not sucked up by the flow discrepancy, which is shown in another way here, simply travels up the pipe and is sucked back in here at D where it is pumped into the radiator. So there's sort of a mixing effect that would take place here. Um, we have a discharge at the bottom and an intake at the bottom. The discharge at the bottom is cold water. The intake at the bottom is the intake to the heating element. So then that hot water out of the heating element comes up to the top to intake C. and whatever is not picked up, most all of it's going to be picked up by this, but whatever is not picked up from the bottom here is still able to be picked up at the top. So there's no discrepancy between the difference in flow rates. This is just a mixing tank. Okay, it'll take a second for the condensation to uh, boil off of this observation dome here, but you can see it's not really an insanely large fire. We're pulling 330 watts overall. And we seem to be losing temperature just a little bit there. It's 140 in, 90 out. Hey, look at that. Not bad. It seems I was right on with my 50 degree estimation. It's crazy. So we're going to check the um, temperature difference on the heater core now. See what the intake reads. It's saying that it's, for whatever reason, it's arriving at 130. 136 and out 126 so you're getting 10 degrees of thermal energy removed from the fluid I should have painted a black strip on here I'm probably gonna get a bad reading okay there we go so yeah that's not a very big fire not really even getting sucked down into the tube there. And we're losing temperature, so I'm going to turn it up a hair here. Turn it up to 350. Yeah, what the heck, this is supposed to be at 100 watts. And that is just too much. It'll probably really start getting going here in a second. Oh, I see. One of my secondary intakes fell off. I need to close that other intake. Yeah, I got an emergency here. The water's starting to boil or something, and the gas bubbles are taking up space. This is not a good situation. I'm trying to shut down. We're just too hot, too fast. There goes my 212 degrees. 
We got a problem here. The water is boiling. It's boiling over. There it goes. Okay, so that was a lesson learned. At 100 watts, it's just too hot. I started boiling. And um, the bubbles occupied so much space that this thing overflowed on me. Lost quite a bit of fluid there. <coughs> I'm now stabilizing at about 194 degrees. 196. That reading is coming from that thermal couple right there. The other thermal couple is right here. This comes straight off the pump and into the preheater, which is the 25 foot S or CSS tubing. CSST, I think it's called. And that runs here into the heater coil intake. Out the discharge there. Up into this heater core, which came out of an automobile. And to produce that 96 degree water, or 196 degree water, looking at a fire about that big. This is a fairly moderate flame. I could put the observation dome on there so we can get a look at the flames.